Join Yvette Walker every Tuesday at 4 o'clock p.m. on KMET ABC News Radio, 1490 a.m., FM 98.1, and Internet KMET TV for the Southern California Business Report. The show is dedicated to highlighting successful businesses and the individuals behind them. Yvette interviews the incredible people managing these enterprises that range from awe-inspiring sole proprietors to world-renowned organizations. The Southern California Business Report, Tuesdays at 4 o'clock p.m. Welcome to KMET 1490 AM ABC News Radio and the Southern California Business Report with Yvette Walker, a show dedicated to highlighting successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them. Welcome and thank you for joining the Southern California Business Report on ABC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM, and KMET TV. I'm Yvette Walker, live blasting our signal from the center of Southern California, serving a population of over 25 million. Get us crystal clear and on demand by downloading the free KMET live streaming app on Google Play or the Apple App Store. A huge shout out to the team, Mitch, Bill, and Sean, as always, I love you. And to our special advisory committee, Bill Morris of UCI School of Business, Jose and Camila Rubio, thank you so much. Don't forget to check out the Jay Kaplan Show also on KMET on Fridays at three. Today, I'm just so excited to be introducing today's guest, Sam Moreno. She is the founder of a nonprofit called Thundar Lightning and Peace, a grassroots effort dedicated to taking action and create positive change for our veterans and military heroes. Sam Moreno is the CEO and founder of Thundar Lightning and Peace, a nonprofit organization geared towards empowering veterans with the tools they need to find their passion. This young, resilient 70 year old high schooler dedicated to act and create this 501c3. Thundar Lightning and Peace aims to provide the grassroots movement the community needs to collectively take action and create change for our veterans and military heroes. Volunteering as far back as she can remember, she has been serving with various organizations in the community. On top of running her on nonprofit, doing speaking engagements and volunteering graciously, she has remained an honor student at the top 6% of her class a part of various clubs and is a member of the Etiwanda Cheer Squad. Her passion is to be a military trauma surgeon, serving alongside our servicemen and women. Sam's road to this point hasn't always been the smoothest and she understands it will probably never be linear. But one thing she does know is that it's crucial to act, not be stagnant, but to take the initiative, react and empower our community to do the same. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sam. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm very grateful for this. I'm so excited to have you. And we need to update your bio because I believe you made varsity cheer squad yes, now, right? I'm now a varsity cheerleader for my senior year. <laughs> very nice. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. So as you know, when we speak to our guests, the first thing I ask them is to please walk us through the journey that brought you to where it is you are today. Okay, so where to begin? I feel as if there wasn't exactly one pinpoint that said, okay, I'm going to start my nonprofit here. It was really an accumulation of everything that I had gone through. And I feel as if I'll begin with the little events and how they kind of trickled into each other. So when I was 13 years old, I was a normal seventh grader. You know, I loved playing basketball, I loved playing volleyball. I love being out with my community, volunteering on the weekends. And out of nowhere, I remember it was the first month of seventh grade, I started not being able to eat. Like everything I ate would just come back up. And I was like, okay, that's, that's probably not normal for a 13 year old. So through many doctor's appointments, many tests, they're like, no, no, you're fine. You're probably making yourself throw up. And I was like, no, I love food. I wasn't the skinny, <laughs> I love food. And then it got to the point where my mom took me to the hospital because I couldn't even drink water. Every time I drink water, it'd come back up. Oh and they're like, she's faking it. She's faking it. So they gave me water to digest a pill. And I drank the water, drank the pill, and within seconds, it came back up. And they're like, okay, this isn't normal. And I'm like, okay, great. Seventh grader, not normal. Okay, this is weird. After numerous tests, they conducted a nuclear um, testing 
and they realized, oh, your gallbladder is not functioning. It looks beautiful from the outside, but the inside it's malfunctioning. So let's go send you to surgery. So not accumulating for the weight and loss, they put me in surgery and they put me under anesthesia, but they were having a hard time waking me up from anesthesia. Oh no. And so all I remember from that month and I a few months on is a blur. Like even to this day, I know that I started passing out really bad after the surgery. Um, I was having a really hard time with memory. I would still, it was really hard to eat. They put me on more of a liquid diet because now that my gallbladder is out, I couldn't have any like fat foods. And I was, I was seven, I was seventh grader. Of course I want in and out McDonald's, all that <laughs> stuff, but my body can't process it anymore. So that was already a shaky road. And then trying to navigate, navigate junior high <laughs> while going through all of that was insane and so that was one big step where I was like okay this is some weird type quote trauma the doctor called it later in my life um freshman year I was like oh my gosh I'm finally in high school this is amazing I've now learned more about my community I started partnering with other organizations just on my own haven't started the nonprofit yet and then um COVID happened <laughs> mid, mid freshman year, year, excuse me. And I was like, well, darn it. <laughs> what do I do now? And there was a lot of points during COVID where I feel as if a lot of community just stopped going out, stopped working together, stopped outreaching because we were all quarantined. And that was really hard thinking about it because me being my 15 year old self, freshman, like, well, I still want to get out to the community. What can I do? And I had brought up the idea, mom, what if we start a nonprofit? And she's like, maybe. A few months go by, it's sophomore year. I do my sophomore year through quarantine because everyone had one school year in quarantine. And so this idea had really rose, rose into everyone's mind. And we were looking at the paperwork. We were starting to really consider doing it. And then March 2021, we started the process for Thunder LP. And it was amazing. I was like, okay, I got the foundation. I got my organization. I have like my idea, which is it's a nonprofit um, aiding towards veterans who suffer PTSD, depression, trauma, anything that makes them feel as if they no longer have a goal or purpose. And I was like, okay, I've been through some stuff. I've been through quarantine. I can help them. And then later in 2021, my junior year occurs. And I'm like, great. I'm so excited for this. It's my first real year of high school. And then one month into high school, I wake up and I can't move. I'm like, not again. This can't happen. Promise me more. This isn't happening. And I go to the hospital and they rush me to emergency surgery because they said, oh, you have a cyst stuck in your fallopian tube. Oh I had a big decision that month because it was a month of ups and downs in now hospital visits trying to be okay again. <laughs> I told my mom, do I really want to do this nonprofit? I am struggling. I really am myself. Um, that month before my surgery, I had actually ruptured part of my um, ligament, patella ligament. Oh, no. And I was in cheer. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is one after another. I could have stopped. But after seeing my grades go down for a bit while being in the hospital, after seeing just a trickling effect of events occur, I felt as if my trauma had just exploded there was so much happening and I was feeling so sad and honestly really negative about myself but I honestly looked at my mom and turned the whole situation around and said no I don't want to spend every single day of mine focusing on my own quote-unquote trauma I don't want to spend each day saying I'm in pain there's nothing I can do how can I turn this around and make this an experience where I can empathize with other people yes I haven't been to war yes I haven't done anything that our warriors and our heroes have faced but I feel at, as if at 17, I have been through a numerous amount of things, switching school seven times, two surgeries, broke, breaking almost every part of my body through other sports that how can I empathize with my community? And so those are really all the events that came together and correlated and really want me to give back to the community and create Thunder LP because everyone goes through trauma, big, little even just moving a house for some people, that's a big impact in their life. And no one's traumas should define who they are. And I really think that this organization, yes, it is geared towards veterans, but I want it to be a message to everyone else that even at 17, if I've been through this much and I can still give back, 
how can we give back to our community and our warriors as well? Absolutely. And, you know, that is such a wise perspective, you know, beyond your years. Uh, quite honestly, I've met many, many, many people throughout my professional and personal careers in, in life. And um, you're absolutely right. You know, channeling your episodes, your pain, your experience into something much greater and, you know, encouraging others to do the same. And it's all about perspective. So I love the perspective that you bring, the energy that you've dedicated and uh, those barriers and those circumstances that you've overcome to to actually fulfill this this dream of yours to start Thundar Lightning and Peace. But before we move any further, let's talk a little bit about the name, right? Because even for myself to say it in that way is a little bit strange because it's Thundar Lightning and, and Peace, thunder. right? And, right, and not Thunder. So please <laughs> talk a little bit about that element. 100%. So it actually ties back to the original um, quote unquote, the trauma effect is what my family jokingly calls it, the trauma that started all when I was 13. Um, after all the really horrendous effects that I had from the anesthesia, I was in the hospital for I think a solid another week or two weeks after. I was just laying there because they couldn't send me home if I kept passing out. That's not really <laughs> the best. Right. It's not safe. Yeah, it's not safe. Right. <laughs> and so I remember just the pain medication they were giving me wasn't working. Nothing they gave me would work. So I was just in constant agonizing pain. And then one day there was a knock on the door. And I'm like this little bone that doesn't want to move. And I'm like, come in? Like thinking, who else could it be besides my mom? And this lady with a giant golden doodle comes in. And says, hi, I work with, um, I forgot what the organization was, but they were, it was a very small one. And they had service pets that they trained to sit on the bed and um, pray with you or just sit on the bed and lay their head close to where your injury or your wound is, but not exactly on it. I was like, okay, I love dogs no matter what. And I believe it was four months prior to our family dog of 10 years had just died. So I was very sensitive because he was a cute little boxer and that was my family dog and I was 13 at the time. So that's all I remembered growing up with. So I was like, okay, I'll let this massive golden doodle sit on me. <laughs> and the golden doodle, bigger than I was, laid on my lap and put his head on me and I had stitches. So I remember being in pain, but I forgot it. Like as soon as the dog touched me and I was holding like this dog, cradling it, I'm like, I want a dog again. Oh. But I wanted this specific breed. And I said, what is this? I've never seen this before in my life. And they said, it's a golden doodle. And I remember my mom had come in at the time. And I just turned and grinned to her. And I said, I want this. <laughs> <laughs> and so October, November arri arrives later. Because um, my surgery was August 22nd of 2017 or 18. But the reason why that date's important is because um, when I had gotten Thundar, my dog, he was born on that specific day. And originally, I wanted to name him Thunder, just normal Thunder, like Thunder and Lightning, all that. So I was like, Thunder, come here. Thunder. And I said that name so many times. And then I rolled my eyes. I was like, Thundar, come here. And he turned around, shook his butt, and ran towards me. <laughs> and he would only respond to Thundar and not Thunder. And it's such a small, slight ending change. It was so interesting to me. I was like, what the heck? And so Thundar just became like my best friend. Like he didn't leave my side and we didn't find out till later on he was born on the day of my surgery. So I said that was a God given. That was just wow. there. And then also his name really was a symbol to me showing that there's always going to be thunder, Thundar in your life. Um, there's always going to be some sort of lightning, like there's always going to be this pain and trauma and everything that life's going to throw at you to make you want to deteriorate, like get away from the path that you're meant to be on. And it, it's going to be a massive storm, but there's always going to be peace at the end. So that's where I incorporated my dog and the aspect of like that weather in a sense into my organization name. So Thundar, Lightning and Peace, because our trauma is the Thundar and Lightning, but there's always going to be a sense of peace at the end. So that's kind of where my name comes from. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. It's very beautiful and very thoughtful. I just, you know, you're, you're moving me right now. So, you know, it's, it's very beautiful. Um, and please 
talk a little bit about, you know, the support system that you had as you started developing this uh, nonprofit, Dundar Lightning and Peace, and, you know, specifically the role that your parents had and your mother has, because I've met her and she is just so incredibly proud of you and understandably so. There's so much to be proud of. Please share with us uh, that support system that you had along the way. So growing up for the longest time, um, I remember always being involved in community and really just understanding how connections can really just get you far in life, not for your own benefit, but to grow amongst others. And we learn a lot through community. And so I remember, I think as young as 10 years old, I was in the church volunteering in the nursery with the little babies, me being a baby myself, and um, really having my mom instill that you can't do anything alone in your life. And by giving back, you also humble yourself because you learn so much more about others. And so my mom's role is really opening up the path so that I can understand. And it really helped me as a person not be an introvert because I was a little shy as a kid. But throwing me into community allowed me to be able to hold adult conversations while I was like 12 years old. And they just look at me like, you're how old? <laughs> and um, just really having her throw me into that and then learning to walk on my own, be like, no, mom, I got this. I would send emails to my own teachers. I would go to them and myself. And um, just really understanding my or the organizations around me. I I don't know if I mentioned this. I don't think I've mentioned this to a lot of people, but I was born and raised in the high desert, Victorville. So I lived there for 13 years. And so my home was always the, um, what is it called? The, oh, I know I'm a part of the Inland Empire Chamber of Commerce, but also the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. And I really want to give them a big shout out because the high desert's my home. Although I may be living in Rancho now, my community's Rancho, my home and where I still want to target is the high desert and the veterans there. But also where I got like the humble aspect, I do give props to my mom, but I also give huge props to my grandparents. They had a giant part of my life. I don't think I would be Sam if it wasn't for them. Every day after school, I'd be at their house and they would just, they were just humble. My grandpa, he's 78 and he still runs up a mountain he's faster than me he just has like <laughs> the ad the agility of like um a, literally anyone any young athletic person I aspire to still be that athletic when I'm older and then my grandma she is when I think of her I think of her as a flower because she's just this petite woman who loves everyone with her whole heart she's a very empathetic person if you're sad she's sad if you need something she'll get it for you and I feel like the way my mom was raised being in the army and being a veteran she was more hard-headed more like this is a fact but my grandma really instilled more of a peace in me and more of a be aware of everything and just love everyone with your whole heart and my mom jokes that she learns things from me because I have that mindset I'm like mom if someone's mad at me if someone's saying something I really don't care like let them do that because by me feeding into this this isn't going to solve anything and my mom's like but I just want to sometimes <laughs> <laughs> that's just a mama bear in right that's mama bears yes <laughs> but you're absolutely right you know um and you're so blessed to have grown up in that environment and learned that very, very critical element that so many of us really need, you know, empathy, understanding, love, forgiveness, uh, those qualities that really not only benefit others, but more so benefit ourselves and bring us, you know, a, a better perspective to move forward and do the things that ultimately bring us and others joy. So that's just, that's beautiful. Thank you. And so in addition to your nonprofit, please talk a little bit about what life looks like as an everyday teenager. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Where to begin? <laughs> so um, this is my junior year. So, of course, this was a very intense year. I was balancing a few AP classes, honor classes, cheer, being in a, having my own nonprofit, being in clubs, and just trying to be a normal teen. So... I feel like my daily weekends, my daily life is friends, family, reading, friends, for instance. Let me start there. Um, I have, I'm very grateful. High school's hard and it's really hard to navigate, but I've been very blessed to have um, very supportive friends and to four really close best friends who I've known since freshman year. And even though we don't text every day, don't FaceTime every day, if one of 
one of us needs them, they will literally show up to my door. I remember one day I was having a bad day and I called my friend and I was just crying. I was like, I don't know why I'm crying, but I'm just stressed. And she hung up on me and I was so mad. And then she showed up at my door. <laughs> and I was like, that's a real friend. <laughs> and it oh was my goodness. having that community. Um, I love going to the movies with them. I love making them do not the normal things. I take them to Claremont to an underground arcade. We, we still go on park dates. Like we still do things that I feel like teens forget to do. Everyone's so hooked on TikTok, you know, but I mean, TikTok's fun. I personally don't have TikTok and all my friends become insane for it, but we try to get out. We try to do hikes and all that. Um, I love reading. Whenever I can have a moment of breathing from homework, I tend to read. Um, right now I'm reading this book called, I actually have it here, Life and Other Inconveniences. And <laughs> I just started it because I'm a bookworm and it's really great. But um, my all time favorite is one called We Should Hang Out Sometimes. And it's actually about a guy who's amputated and he's trying to navigate his love life. <laughs> so it's very hilarious because he says, we should hang out sometime and, and people reject him. But he says sometime so that it doesn't sound so formal. And it's just a, it's a good book. So reading, running, whenever my brain is frazzled from life, I go on a run. And my mom thinks I'm insane for it. But it just, I blast music in my ears, which I love Bruno Mars. All my friends love Bruno Mars. <laughs> Bruno Mars and Ty Virtus. I repeat their music so much. I scream their music. And I'm having a bad day. My friends will turn on one of them songs and I just scream my heart out. <laughs> and that's what my friends know me for, blasting music, going on runs. Um, I also try to go watch movies. Like <laughs> I like going to the Victoria Gardens, AMCs, sitting down and watching a movie. I love Ryan Reynolds. That's my favorite actor. <laughs> I've seen all of his movies. So just being a normal teenager, having those little like you know crushes, Bruno Mars, Ty Virtus, Ryan Reynolds, um, and really playing with my dog too. As cliche as it is, he like shoves me off of him, then hugs me. I'm like, Thunder, just let me hug you. I'm so stressed, but Trying to balance all of that, a social life while being an honor student, while having my nonprofit, while being a good daughter, it's, it can be a lot sometimes, but um, nonetheless, I feel like we as humans really just have to take time for ourselves, and it's difficult, but <laughs> I really do my best. And then obviously volunteering. Whenever I'm not busy with anything, I, my mom's like, let's go here, or I'm dragging now at this age, I'm like, hey, mom, I'm going to go drive because I have my license. So she's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm a volunteer here. And she's like, since when? <laughs> and I'm like, I'll be back later. And so I feel like I'm never home anymore because I just, I don't like sitting down with my own thoughts because I feel like as humans, we all don't like doing that. So I'd rather be out and about or doing stuff or doing little hobbies. <laughs> right. Staying engaged, right? Staying active and participating in life, right? What's greater than participating in life, especially as a, as a young woman such as yourself that has been through health struggles and has had, you know, those challenges that at some point have been incapacitating, right? And so to have the opportunity to live that full life and to be healthy is, is just wonderful, right? And so I can totally relate to the running part. I was a former cross-country girl myself. I used to run 10, 15 miles a day and people would look at me like, what is going on? It's that's me processing, you know, it's like a good way to just process. And the best weather is rain. I swear by it. I love the rain. Weather. That's my favorite type of weather. <laughs> that's the best weather for running. Absolutely. And so um, what do your friends say about your efforts and how do they, you know, view your efforts and what are some of the thoughts that they share with you? Ah, oh, geez. Well, my friends know me by a quote. It's but it's they call me a kid at heart because I'm always like the one that it's like, hey, let's go see an animation movie or let's do something like that. So my friends really define me as the Charlie Brown quote where it's Charlie Brown saying, hey, Snoopy, we only live once. And then Snoopy looks at him and yells, wrong. We only die once, but we live every day. And that's what my friends really know me as. because That was my favorite quote. I'd say it all the time. And they they really tell me I don't stop, but they love it. Because a lot of my friends are introverts. And so by knowing me, I drag them with me everywhere. Um, at my last event, my really, um, the starter and the introduction of TLP, I dragged five of my closest friends with me. I said, I don't care if you're quiet, you're going to come help me. And they're all a little nervous, but it gave them a chance to dress up. And all of them love it. Um, and they, 
they enjoy what they said they enjoy watching me speak because even though I talk a lot at school they've never really seen me in a professional settings but it makes me happy because in a selfless way I love now seeing them wanting to get onto the community my really close friend he now wants to start his own nonprofit later in life he's like not now he's like I'm too tired now but <laughs> there's a nonprofit for Latinos and it's just amazing being able to in a way inspire my own friends and just no, be able to get them out in the community because a lot of them didn't even realize nonprofits were a thing they're like what's a nonprofit and so a lot of the time um they really are just intrigued and they always tell me how can I help and now that Thundar is getting a little bit bigger, I have other acquaintances who are like, oh, you have a nonprofit. How can I help? And it really is amazing to just be able to grasp community together. That's essentially all my organization's about. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. And we're going to go to break. So for those listening, I'm Yvette Walker on Southern California Business Report on ABC News and Talks, KMET 1490 AM. 98.1 FM and KMET TV talking to Sam Moreno, CEO and founder of nonprofit Thundar Lightning and Peace, a grassroots effort dedicated to taking action and create positive change for our veterans and military heroes when we return. Every two seconds, someone needs a blood transfusion. Be on the giving side. Livestream Blood Bank supports patients in 80 Southern California hospitals. Call 1-800-TRY-GIVING for more information and to set an appointment. City of Hope is driven to making a difference in the lives of people with cancer and diabetes. We accomplish this by conducting innovative research and providing outstanding care. If you or a loved one has received a cancer diagnosis, go to cityofhope.org to learn more about how our innovative approach could change your outcome. The University of Laverne is rated first in California for alumni satisfaction. Learn more about accelerated programs offered online and on campus in Laverne, Irvine, Ontario, Burbank, or College of the Canyons. Visit go.laverne.edu. The University of Laverne. Go.laverne.edu. Ontario International Airport is on to a better way to fly with over 65 daily non-stop flights to more than 20 major destinations and the easiest airport experience in Southern California. Visit flyonto.com slash Ontario to learn more about Ontario International Airport today. Hi, I'm San Bernardino County Sheriff Shannon Dykus. If you're looking to start an exciting career in law enforcement and make a difference in your community, we are hiring. Dispatchers, nurses, deputies, laterals, and many more. For a complete list of our jobs and more information, visit sheriffsjobs.com. Cal State San Bernardino is home to the only school of entrepreneurship in California. With globally ranked degree programs, you can start your journey today to become a successful entrepreneur. Learn more and connect at entre.csusb.edu. <laughs> Welcome back. For those listening, I'm Yvette Walker on Southern California Business Report on ABC News and Talks KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM and KMET TV. Talking to Sam Moreno, CEO and founder of nonprofit Thundar Lightning and Peace, a grassroots effort dedicated to taking action and create positive change for our veterans and military heroes. Thank you again for being with us today, Sam. Of course, thank you again for having me. This is a beautiful opportunity. <laughs> it really is. And you are just such a beautiful spirit. I'm so happy that you're sharing your story with us. You know, before the break, you kind of gave us the rundown of how Thunder, Lightning and Peace came to be, um, you know, the support system that you have had as, um, in your efforts to move forward, what your friends think about it, and what life is like, basically, as a teenage, as an everyday teenager, so to speak, even though your efforts are not what everyday teenagers 
typically do. So um, thank you so much for that. Um, as we move forward, let's talk a little bit about the secret to your success in terms of the momentum that you've been able to build with um, collaborating and uh, working with other organizations throughout the community. Okay, so I want to give huge props to Justin Bond, who is the CEO and founder of Our Heroes Dreams. And he himself, um, he has a nonprofit for veterans, and it's massive. But he himself is a veteran and an amputee himself. So he's able to really empathize with the veterans and really get awareness and teach people what it really is like to have PTSD, to have trauma, to be amputated. And it's just a beautiful thing. And him and I got connected and he really took me under his wing. He really just started mentoring me, giving me the reality to like, not just everything's going to be nice and easy. He said, no, starting a nonprofit is hard. There's paperwork. It takes like six months to get approved. It's I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you, but I want to be here with you every step of the way. And that was my real, oh my gosh, I can do this. There's someone willing to help me, someone willing to help me. I was 15, 16 at that time where I was like, oh my gosh, I really don't know what I'm doing. And um, I remember what really helped me really understand where I wanted to get my nonprofit, where I wanted to like roadmap it to was when he invited me to his golf tournament that was supporting veterans and um I got to shoot a golf ball through an AR-15 and that was so fun <laughs> and it was just beautiful because people were donating there's veterans there there's other amputees there and it was just a way to bring community together and raise money for his organization so that really helped me understand the needs of vets too as I got to even though my mom's a veteran but I got to talk to more vets there and I was like wow this is this is what I can do. And he's just telling me how I can help him raise money and how he can help me just really, he wants to push me over the edge like a little baby bird and watch me fly. He's like, I'm just going to throw things at you. So he was one of the big ones. And that's Justin Bond for our hero's dreams. And then um, a local supporter of mine is Claremont Sunrise Rotary. And I got connected with them when I was actually 13, a little bit before my surgery which is ironic because the first event I went through them was a lot, was creating prosthetic arms for amputees, which was really funny. Never did I think I'd be here having a nonprofit for people who are amputated. And so when I was 13, I volunteered with them and I got connected with them. And um, my mom and I are, ro are Rotarians now, and I'm actually the youngest Rotarian in the organization. So that feels good. <laughs> Congratulations from one Rotarian to another. <laughs> Thank you. I actually got pinned at um, my launch. And so that was a huge deal for me because I was like, oh my gosh, I've been with them for almost four years and now I'm getting pinned as the youngest Rotarian. And it was, it was really neat. So they've really been one of my supporters throughout this whole time. They're like, Sam, like, what can we do? So they've helped with donations. They've helped by allowing me their plates, like their um, buildings that I can host my own events in. And through them, I did Blankets for Vets, which is where we had 100 people come together, or not 100 people, but about 78 people come together to make about 100 blankets for veterans. And it was just beautiful because that they hosted it, but they said TLP is the one running it. So they really allowed me the resources for that. Um, so as well, trying to think. oh, Inland Empire Chamber of Commerce. Edward Ornalis, he is a go-getter. He is a great leader. And he is just, he's a man of many hats. And he met me and um, my mom's a part of the Inland Empire Chamber of Commerce. But I remember I met him before my mom. And he's like, huh, you're a cool little kid. <laughs> and just to have his support and allow him, the, and him allowing me to always have opportunities at any other place and just be able to kind of get connections through him is really magnificent because I'm 17. I still can make conversation and have connections, but having an adult willing to bring you to these events and kind of display you, it's a massive opportunity. So I'm very grateful for him. Um, I mentioned a little earlier, the greater high desert chamber of comrades. I'm very grateful because I want to give back to the high desert, you know, where I was born, but currently um, I just partnered with, Warriors, um, working dogs for warriors, and it's a nonprofit organization who has. <laughs> I get so happy talking about this. <laughs> they have service dogs for veterans, and I just love dogs. So I was like, "Oh my god, I have to help them!" And so the blankets that we actually made with the Kremas Sunrise Rotary 
um, I donated a lot of them to the doggies because the doggies get cold and they're little kennels sometimes. So I donated some of them and right now we're partnered and I'm just helping them in any way I can. I'm supporting them because the delight and the warmness I see on veterans' hearts when they have their best friend, which is a dog near them, just keeping them calm is beautiful because that's how I feel around Thundar and I'm not a veteran. And so I just, I find that relationship very beautiful. And so those are really the organizations I'm with right now and the ones who are kind of helping me. I call my family its own organization because I wouldn't be here without like my uncle and his <laughs> drug, my mom and her hats. But um, those are really the ones that have helped me get where I am and kind of motorboat me and take me under their wings. Oh my goodness. That's wonderful. You know, to have those organizations come and, you know, support you and prop you up. And I have to say, Mr. Ornelas also was a little bird who initially told me about you. So, you know, I, I met your mother and then I went to the event and I said, yes, you're going to be on the program. Let's get you on. So thank you, Edward, (laughs) for introducing us to this brilliant young woman. And so it sounds to me like right now you are in a phase of fundraising and not necessarily launching your own individual programs, but supporting the programs of others. Exactly. So I feel as if um, explaining like the goal of TLP will kind of help this a little more as well. So because I'm 17, I feel like because I'm not legal, I can't do a lot of stuff yet. Um, But TLP, I told my mom, I really want to be the resources. So I want to be where people can go to and I can navigate them to other places until I myself have everything set up. So in a way, yes, like right now we are um, fundraising, but my end goal is I want to be able to get these organizations fully partnered with mine. So although I'm um, sourcing them out, I can be like, hey, this is still under TLP. But these are our connections because nonetheless, it's about community, you know. Right. Absolutely. And so as you look forward, what are some, you know, ideas for programs or a vision of what it is that you would like to see Thundar, Lightning and Peace really, you know, dig into and pursue? Oh, 100%. So when I think about where this program is going to go and um, the places like I'd like to, the events I'd like to hold, um, well, we're in the process right now of raising money for medic bags for um warrior working dogs for warriors but um right now our goal is kind of (sighs) sorry if i could envision thunder anywhere right now here let's start that if i could envision tlp anywhere right now i would say that i would really want us to have um a camp that we can send people to as a family retreat not just for the moment sounds but to go and build community. And a lot of the things I see Our Heroes Dreams doing where they have family retreats, they have veterans retreats, they have little events that people can go to to really support each other. So I would love to just have a place where we can have people go to and just really be able to relax and vibe. And um, first and foremost, so like, I really want to emphasize the fact that like, I feel like supporting other community, supporting other community organizations, like nonprofits and what they are doing is a big part of where I want to do. I don't feel the need to be spot and center. I don't feel the need to like, hey, TLP is the organization. I will be like, hey, through TLP, I was able to really heal myself and understand that I have a purpose by getting a service dog. And so like right now we're raising money to create medic bags for um, the dogs to have on their service um, harnesses because a lot of the time they go hiking, they're everywhere. And if they get a splinter or something, they don't really have an emergency bag. So right now we're raising money and taking donations so that they can um, raise enough money to create those little pouches with gauzes, tweezers, and everything. And so that's like the main first thing that we're trying to do. But like I said, nonetheless, I don't want to be the main one. I really want to be the outlet people can go to. I want them to know that TLP is the one we can go to and we'll be able to really heal our own selves. I love that. So please share with us how, you know, these efforts have helped you and how you're doing mentally and physically today. (laughs) I'm not going to (laughs) lie. This is a lot, especially being 17. Um, This year, my brain and body really hasn't had liked me that much. I just because of the surgeries and um, because my body's been through a lot. I know a lot of the doctors tell me like, it's just going to be rough. Some mornings I wake up and everything aches, especially like half of my face. And we still don't really know why. So 
so it's really hard, especially because I stay up late studying tirelessly. Um, I'm the I'm in the top six percent of my class too, so managing my studies alongside trying to be physically okay, it is very difficult. But I don't really see it as a negative thing. I just see it as another thing that I can grow from because life's not going to get easier. And so being able to cope with this now and understand it, um, especially after having COVID, that really hurt because I'm already not having a gold bladder. I can't eat cheeseburgers, pizzas a lot without my stomach hurting. But then after having COVID, I lost my taste buds. So I couldn't taste chocolate. Oh, oh, that's (laughs) awesome. That was horrible. But um, I think today, like in this moment and these last this last month, actually, these last two months have really just it's been a struggle up and down with AP exams and finals. But I'm actually OK. I'm excited to be a senior next year. I'm excited to apply to college and I'm really excited to see what else life has to offer. And um, emotionally, I'm a female. Everything gets to me, but <laughs> I'm hard headed. <laughs> So I feel like I'm doing okay in that sense. Very good. You're you're sensitive, but you're moving forward, you know, the way you should and as you should, very assertively. And it's wonderful because you are doing some tremendous work in the community and you are an inspiration, not only to your peers, but to people like myself, you know, and so many that are listening to you today and will be listening to you in the future. So as you move forward, please share with us what you are looking for forward to as you move forward in your education in your career you know what colleges are you looking at what career path are you considering so (laughs) right now I don't have a specific order but there's five schools that I'm in love with NYU I was very um I was very grateful because I was able to tour the college when I went to New York and I loved it I loved the campus I loved the programs they offer and it was just love at first sight so New York University, NYU, also Loma Linda, because they are partnered with the VA hospital. And I know many beautiful people and doctors who work there. And they're just so kind. And the campus itself is already beautiful. And it's close to home. Um, UCLA, just because they have a veterans program as well. They have a VA hospital. And it just, it's always enticing. It's always UCLA, which is everyone talks about. And I've just always been fascinated with it. Um, the University of Pennsylvania. Just because from my knowledge and my own research, they're the only ones that have a program for neuroorthopedics. So incorporating neurology with orthopedics and like how the muscles in the brain works, which is fascinating because, you know, depression, amputees, that kind of ties together as a body. And then um, lastly, like there's no specific one, but any UCs or any local colleges that will give me a full ride or scarce (laughs) because nonetheless, college is scary and expensive. And so... California is still my heart and so any like California schools that are willing to like grant me anything a full ride anything I will graciously take because education is education no matter where you go but (laughs) part of me still wants to aim for Harvard and NYU just because my brother lives in the east coast and I really wouldn't be hard-headed if it wasn't for him he we're 10 years apart he's 27 so he lives in New Hampshire and he works with the Department of State and he's an intelligent dude. He knows five languages. He's just a go-getter. He was in the Peace Corps and whenever I wanted to give up or if I got a bad grade on something, he'd be the one to be like, Sam, no, focus. You are going to do great things. And everyone's always like, yeah, it's my parents pushing me. But in my, in my opinion, it was my brother pushing me. He wants me near him and I want to be near him. So that's why I'm thinking East Coast. But Due to the fact that my nonprofit is here locally, I really, it depends on the opportunities I'm given, where I'm going to go, what colleges I get accepted to. And um, and for my future career pathways, I'm really looking at um, anything to do with being a surgeon, especially in orthopedics or being a trauma surgeon. Just because I do love our veterans in the military, I would love to be able to become a trauma surgeon in the military. That is like one of my goals. But if life doesn't lead me that way, I would still love to be very hands-on, be an orthopedic surgeon or a neurosurgeon. Orthopedics more is my type just because I've broken, sprained, fractured everything. I think it'd be funny talking to someone and being like, oh, I've already done that. I've already had surgery for that. (laughs) And so that's kind of the goal, but trauma surgeon would be beautiful just because being able to be 
in the moment, in the action, being able to help someone in that moment, being having that adrenaline and knowing what to do and be able to help someone is what I find fascinating. I love hands on and I love talking, as you can tell. But a small goal of mine is to go to the Met Gala. And that's just if my nonprofit could get invited anywhere, <laughs> I would go there. If I could get invited anywhere the Met Gala just because from a little kid I just always liked it not even for the celebrities just the outfits the whole atmosphere it's such a dumb kid girl dream but that's like I told my mom I'm gonna get there one day so it's it there's nothing dumb about dreaming you know where would we be but for our dreams right and so look at your dream for your nonprofit. Uh, you know, you're going to be helping, you are helping so many people already as it is. And it's it's perfect. Um, you know, you're putting it out there, right? And so there's so many people that are listening. There are scholarships available. I'm sure deans of uh, higher education are listening right now. And so here you go, Sam Moreno. She's looking for acceptance letters and scholarships. And don't forget, you know, just last week we had Maria Fernanda, who was talking about IO scholarships. She's actually going to have a podcast this evening at five o'clock. Um, it's called uh, Heroes in STEM. And so I'm going to be sharing that on my uh, LinkedIn page as well as my Facebook page. So anyone that's listening, please go check into that as well, because there are over $48 million in scholarships that are up for grabs. And we were just talking about this last week. So just giving her a little plug because it's just phenomenal what it is that she's doing as well. So um, tell us a little bit about some of those events that you have coming up and, you know, what the dynamic is, what the time frame is, and where people can go to get information and support your efforts. 100%. So obviously, as I mentioned earlier, right now, our current one we are doing is fundraising money for um, working dogs for warriors, getting those medic bags. And in June, um, our goal is to really have 45 medic bags for the service dogs. I got all my events lined up here, so I'm going to make sure I get this right. <laughs> Um, these medic bags to supply all the medical supplies that the dogs need if the warrior or the dog himself gets injured. And so just because I've already touched on that, that's like the main one. We we want a total of, I think, 45 um, bags, but it's going to cost us about four grand. So we're fundraising now. <laughs> and so that's the main donating one, um, donation one. And my Instagram shout out is at Thunder LP. And that's where um, we post a lot. and thunderlp.org is our website very easy to access but remember thunder with an ar not er and so that's where we have all the events listed the one that's upcoming is actually on july 15th and this is through top golf which i am very grateful for because top golf is this huge thing and um Estef estefan and ebl law group is actually co-hosting the event with me um, and Thunder LP, and it's gonna, well, Esteban himself, shout out to him, he's a Purple Heart veteran, and he has a giant scar right here, and I'm just very grateful for his help, his law group, his law firm, and everything, and um, it's just for our vets to play, and it's free for the veterans, because we want them to enjoy community, and understand, hey, we're so grateful for what you did, come have fun at Top Golf. so that's on July 15th, and um, that one, we just have a flyer for that I believe is going to be up on my website, just telling you more how that you can pay per golf, I mean, pay per, pay per like play, and how your money is going to help us, how what you do is going to really benefit us as a group. And there's just different challenges and things you guys can, people can win too as they play. So that's a really neat one that's coming up. And then the last one that we have planned just so far, I'm sure there's going to be way more upcoming, but just for the moment is um, our first annual golf tournament. And that's going to be with the help of Justin Bond, just because that's my little tribute to him, because since I really fell in love with mine through his golf tournament, I want to make a golf tournament annual thing for mine. And so we are raising money for the working dogs who are going to be attending it too, just so they can come with their people. And, um, I'm making sure I have this right. And that's going to be August 22nd, and that's a Monday. And that's essentially just having everyone come. We're going to have individuals pay, I think, $165 if they're willing, just because that money is going to go towards veterans. And that's going to go towards them playing. 
and also band kids from my school who are beautiful are going to be playing during lunch just because I want to showcase my own school too. I'm very proud to be an Etiwanda High School student and bring my community into whenever I can during my things. And um, Working Dogs for Warriors, Our Heroes Dreams, Inland Empire Chamber of Commerce are also supporting this as well. So those are the few we have upcoming. And like I said, at thunderlp.org, there's so much more information. Registration's already open for all of those. And so those are the ones we have upcoming right now. I love it. So you said August 22nd for the golf tournament. Is that the same birthday and the surgery date is around that time? <laughs> Actually, that wasn't planned. You say it right now. That is hilarious. Did did that you is- did we just discover that just no, now? Look at that. Actually, breaking news, everybody. <laughs> what a coincidence, right? Yes, I was about to say. As soon as I said the date, I was like, "Why does that feel really familiar?" Like, <laughs> yes, that is breaking news. The golf tournament, which is going to be the annual thing, is held on my surgery day and my dog's birthday. So I will definitely be showcasing my dog there, being like Thunder and me. That's <laughs> right. It all started. Absolutely. And then in Montana, the Sierra. Um, golf club. Oh my goodness. How exciting. Well, I want to uh, see what it is that you're doing. I want to go and support you. I'm so excited. I'm so thankful for your energy, for your spirit, and for your optimistic outlook and your hard work and determination in light of everything that you've had to face in, in, you know, your very short life, 17 years, you're still so young. You have such a long life ahead of you. Thank you so much. And just being able to be on this platform is such a great opportunity. Just being able to talk to you and share my story and give the community a little more insight about me. It's very wonderful. A little nerve wracking, 17 years old, but it's still a great opportunity. Well, you handled it like a professional. So thank you so much, Sam, for joining us. And for everyone listening today, don't forget to look for us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Check us out on scbrtalk.com. And don't forget to download the free live streaming app on Google Play or the Apple App Store. Don't miss my interview with Maria Fernanda Trochi Mesuk, founder and diversity, equity, and inclusion officer at IO Scholarships. Maria Fernanda is passionate about making diversity a norm as she advocates for the empowerment of underrepresented STEM students from racially, culturally, and linguistically diverse backgrounds. As the founder of IO Scholarships, she is committed to building the diverse and inclusive STEM workforce the world needs by matching undergraduate and graduate students with life-changing scholarships and internship opportunities. Born in Buenos Aires, Argentina, she arrived to UCSB and won over $250,000 in scholarships to pursue her education. Since then, she has devoted her energy to helping more underserved students find free money to go to college. She has been featured in just about every major Hispanic media outlet, including Univision, Telemundo, NBC Latino, Mundo Fox, CNN en Español, Diversity in Steam Magazine, Hispanic Network Magazine, Black EOE Journal, and Professional Women's Magazine. She has an extensive experience in developing and executing successful diversity campaigns for top-tier leading companies such as Google, Wells Fargo, First Five California, Consejo Sano, Mass Mutual, and Tuition Funding Sources. Maria Fernanda began her career at Hispanic Business Magazine, where her responsibilities included research, event management, and strategic marketing for various Hispanic business divisions. She graduated from Universidad del Salvador, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in international relations. Additional, additionally, she was selected on a national level to be part of the Stanford Latino Entrepreneurship Program. Next week, we will have San Bernardino County District Attorney Jason Anderson. Mr. Anderson has been a member of the California State Bar since 1997. He graduated from Regent University School of Law in Virginia in 1996. Mr. Anderson served as a Deputy District Attorney for the County of San Bernardino from 1998 until 2014. In this capacity, he worked as a prosecutor, handling a variety of serious cases, particularly in the Crimes Against Children unit for 13 years. Mr. Anderson has been married for 26 years and has two children. District Attorney Anderson's mission includes respecting and inspiring confidence in the rule of law both inside and outside the office, 
collaboratively ensuring justice with excellence, integrity, and compassion, stewarding public resources to hold the guilty accountable, support victims of crime, and honoring the humanity of all involved in the criminal justice system, and restoring a culture of service and accountability to the San Bernardino County District Attorney's Office. Next week, everyone, don't miss it. This has been the Southern California Business Report with Yvette Walker on KMET 1490 AM, FM 98.1, and ABC News Radio Affiliate, a show dedicated